I do not know how this works because today I took, I started recording when Bruce started coming down the stairs because I had asked him to come downstairs and talk to me about his thing I'm going to talk about. And um, he started coming down the stairs and you could see the expression on my face. And then I, we went through everything. I told him everything and he kept wanting to turn it to himself. He did that twice before I could give him all the information that I had. Telling me about how bad his day yesterday was. Because he woke up in a foul mood or something. Anyway, when I got all done and we were all done talking, and I went to find it on the camera roll. Only The only thing that it showed was my face and the sound of the stairs as he's coming down. And then everything is gone. It recorded for like five seconds and then stopped. And I don't know why. Why would it do that? I mean, it's not like Napper and I weren't talking. I mean, I was talking. Maybe my face was out of the frame, but a bit because I was like this, talking to him. Anyway, I don't understand it. Um, but, so, <laughs> this is kind of funny and not funny at the same time. Funny, not funny. But, Tuesday... While Chaplain Dan was here, I had the uh, unusual pain that I get in my my side, but like what I call kind of like fat cramps. Jason and I call them fat cramps. Started on the left hand side as it always does now, and uh, I was having a real hard time with it, and finally ended up, you know. It moved to the other side, and I'm trying to talk with Chaplain Dan, and um, he could tell something was wrong. And he ended up going, leaving a little early, and then after he left, I went and I sat on my bed, um, <clears throat> as I always do when I've been walking around the house at all, even with the oxygen on. You know, I have to go and sit on my bed and get my breath back, and I got that pain that I get in my, I had in my stomach, which is a very weird pain, um, I mean, it just, whew, it's like a sharp burning kind of piercing pain that just takes my breath away, and I can't hardly move, can't hardly talk, but bread cures it, I eat a piece of bread, and the pain goes away, and it started after I took some ibuprofen. I was taking a lot of ibuprofen, not a lot of Tylenol. Because all we had was this big bottle of ibuprofen. So I would take four of them at a time, which is the equivalent of 800 milligrams. Which is, you know, a dose you can get, like, from the doctor's office. You know, I always, I always take into account my, my weight when I take medications. Um, anyway, I got that pain for the first time after I'd been taking ibuprofen for a couple of days for a pain. And I got that pain the first time and it was, Bruce saw it. And he understood immediately that this was a pain <laughs> so there wasn't any there wasn't any fooling around with it and I ate the bread and that, that happened like two three times and I'd eat the bread and I'd be okay well I'm sitting on the side of my bed and that pain starts but it's not in the in like the pit of my stomach it's like right here just below just above Okay, just, just below the bottom of my rib cage in the front. The so xiploid process is down. That's the last part of your 
breastplate. <clears throat> And it started there, and I was like, what? Why is, what is this? Why is this there? And I started sweating. No, nope, I didn't start sweat. That was the next day. And I, um, it just, it felt like it was rising. It felt like it was rising, and it went up on the right side and went into my jaw, into my neck. And then I thought, well, this is freaking odd. And I went, and I got the bread. Nope. First, I took um, some, a little extra morphine. I could take 0.25, and I was going up to, uh, I did not go to 0.5, um, which would be 10 milligrams. 0.25 is, is uh, 5 milligrams of liquid morphine. And then you go up to 0.5, and that would be 10 milligrams. I went like maybe seven, six or seven. And that did not seem to help much anyway. And then I went and got some bread. I went and got some raisin bread. And that helped, and the pain went away. But it was frightening. And this was in the afternoon, the late afternoon, going on 4 o'clock. And, uh, so after that time, I just, I stayed upstairs and I went to bed. You know, I went to sleep early. I don't remember coming back downstairs. I might have that day, Tuesday night. So then, but what I had done, I took a shower on Tuesday. I did my laundry on Tuesday. Um, laundry being the sheets and the blanket for Friday tomorrow and um, I did a lot of kitchen cleaning and then I ended up I spoke with uh, Cap Chaplain Dan had that pain and then made my own dinner and then um, it was like a big day full of a lot of stuff not used to doing that much stuff in a day. I'm just not because it just makes me breathless. Puff, puff. Anyway. And then Thursday. Wednesday. I woke up feeling really good. But I felt as the day went on. It was just like, oh my gosh. Going from the kitchen back to my bedroom was just so. It just wiped me out going from my bed to the bathroom just kind of woke me up wiped me out I spent most of the day in bed on Wednesday and then in the evening oh, I can't remember I, oh I do I do because I took morphine again that night but just a regular amount thinking it would have helped that pain Eight fifteen. That's what time it happened. Eight fifteen. And I got sweaty. Oh my gosh. I mean, I had the window open and I was sweating and I was hurting and I thought to myself, I can't stand this pain. I can't stand this pain. Um what do I do? I can't call 911. I'm DNR. What do I do? I call. I'm on hospice. I'm dying, but I'm, I feel like I'm dying. And I thought that was silly. You're not going to call the ambulance. You don't call them. Should I call the hospice RN? You know, the hospice 24 hour line and say, I, I know I'm dying, but I feel like I'm dying. I'm really hurting. And, I, you know, and I didn't do it finally. I got more bread, took more bread and ate that and the pain kind of went away again with the bread. I don't know what it is, which is odd because by that time it was, it was right here. The pain was right here in my chest and just hurt so bad. How could bread save that? 
but at least I didn't have to call hospice, 24-hour line, or um, the hospital, you know. I guess as long as we have bread thought, I'm good. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> And then today, I've been kind of, you know, <laughs> peeking around corners, waiting to see, is it coming? Is that pain coming? And odd as it is, Star called me today <laughs> to tell me that tomorrow she's going to be late for our appointment. Can we do it instead for the afternoon? And I was like, I cannot believe you called me because I have been debating, you know, what, who do I call about this? So I talked to her about what the pain was and what I had done and um, she gave me permission to increase the morphine up to 0.5 if I needed it. Um, and then um, she ordered she ordered some nitroglycerin which will be delivered tomorrow. And I guess we'll find out if it's hard or not. Um, but boy! Who knew? <laughs> I don't want it to be problems with my heart coming on because I deserve it totally sitting here smoking like a fiend while I'm on end stage COPD when I have end stage COPD and I'm on hospice yeah let's keep smoking but like they say the damage has already been done and stopping smoking when they first when I first got um, put into hospice was to help me deal with the stress with the bruise the bruise thing we've worked out to a great deal a great extent um, but it's ironic I don't want to die of a heart attack before I can move in with Roxanne who wants me to live with her who, and I need, I want my own place, you know, a place that I don't ever have to feel like if I say the wrong thing, and I often say the wrong thing, I'm going to get kicked out, and I won't, you know, I'll have to go and sleep on Marcy's cart, um, couch. This look is me starting to feel... Like peeking around the corner. Is that you coming or is it something else? But it's gone now. And Bruce is gone. I don't know when he, he'll be back. And I would hate to have him catch me doing this video. Um, I can't. I've tried. I can't make a video when Bruce is here. I feel like he's upstairs listening. He's going to hear something he's not going to like. It's going to trip over our detente um, but I don't I don't know so half of me is waiting for that pain to come and half of me is waiting for that sliding glass door sound to show me that he's here and anyway I've told my story tomorrow it's Friday. Lisa will be here in the morning. I don't know if I'm going to take a shower tomorrow. I'm afraid to. Um, but as long as I don't do, I won't. I don't have to do laundry because I got that stuff. Well, I will because I'll have to do. But I don't have to do it tomorrow. I just have to make sure I get the laundry gets done before Friday, next Friday. Anyway, um, Lisa in the morning, and then the CNA in the morning, and then Star the RN. In the, in the afternoon not a specific time but then we'll talk about this and Bruce is like I'm always um, he started I'm afraid I'm gonna walk in and find your dad and I keep telling him if you find me on the floor doesn't matter just put a pillow over my head cover me up and call that 24-hour hospice line they'll send somebody out to relieve you of me <laughs> I don't know how I would ever pick you up you don't pick me up. You don't move me. You don't do nothing. You just put a pillow under my head and cover me up and call that number. 
I don't know what I do. You put a pillow under my head. <laughs> you cover me up if that's what you feel like doing. And you call the 24-hour hospice number. Which is kind of funny. Anyway, so that's how. That's how yesterday and the day before went. 